so nice out. It's 70 degrees in the first day of March now, right? So what's on that list for the day? So we are up in Michigan, which is, we, we have all seasons this week. <laughs> We're up for a week, and today is a high of like 72. It's crazy. But tomorrow is a high of 30. So part of the plan for our time up here this week was to kind of, of course, hang out with family, which is the best, and relax and be together. But my dad harvests and boils down and bottles his own syrup every year. Mm -hmm. And that is this time of year, Feb you know, the end of February, March, depending on the weather, it really just varies and you have to watch it and pay attention to it. This year is kind of fun because he wanted to bring the kids along, us along for a small scale harvest and process. And we thought it would be really cool to share it with everybody because first of all, I've never gotten to see the whole process start to finish. Yep. He's walked us through it, but it hasn't been like every, you know, getting to see everything. So I'm really excited about that. And dad is out of town yep. until tonight. Need so some help. because of this crazy <laughs> weather thing. Something with the flow of the sap, um, that it's a much more pure um, flow or a pure sap when it's, when the temperatures are in the right parameters. Cold, not, cold. Cold, yeah. When it goes from like the cold mornings to the warmer afternoons and then back to the cold back again. So we are going to go out and save the current sap that's been collected, get it into some uh, holding containers so that when he gets home, we can boil it down because um, there's a chance that coming up here soon, if we don't get to it, like today, that it will turn into this milky sap that can start to make it uh, bitter. Some mind-blowing stats that I didn't ever, I never knew about is maple syrup from the sugar maple tree takes about 40 to 44 gallons of sap to make one gallon of pure maple syrup. And if you've been following our family for any period of time, you know that we one gallon syrup. of syrup does not last long yeah, in our yeah. house. And the other thing that we learned too, because we were intrigued about the whole sap uh, collection process and making our own syrup is we didn't realize that you can make syrup off of different things. You can make it off of black walnut trees is, is a Native Americans made syrup. We should try that, of that sometime. So we would like to do that at some point in time. Birch, so, birch, birch trees sap. you can do. Um, so, so there's a there's a, there's a a variety of different trees that you can pull the sap off of and make a, a high quality syrup out of it. It's just that the sugar maple, I think produces the best quality and Tasting. maybe the most volume. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're gonna go out, we're gonna oh, get, he, nice. he switched up years ago to some of these poly bags because they're way easier to work with in the tapping process. So anyway, Grandpa will go into all that later on, but we're gonna go out on this beautiful day, collect the syrup, the sap, and get the sap put aside so that we can boil that down and show you the process later on here. Yeah, and he's gonna teach the kids and y'all just the start to finish process. He does it on a big scale normally, but here's, he's doing it on a simple scale for all of us so that anyone, could anyone can do it. Do it. You yeah. could try it at home. Yeah, you don't need a ton of crazy equipment to do this. Yeah, and it really is the best. So it's gonna be fun, let's go yep. do it. Let's go. This is Grandpa's Sugar Shack. So he has instructed us while he's gone to grab his different um, stainless steel pots. We're gonna fill them up and collect the sap in there. And then because it's so cool out here right now, we're just gonna let it sit out here for the 24 hours, it'll be fine. But he's got an evaporator out here underneath the wood stove and all this cool stuff. So uh, let's get some containers and go collect the sap. So Marie and I were just talking about how much this is. This is only about nine or 10 gallons of sap. So rough calculations is that's only like a quart of syrup, which we go through that in like 
I don't know, two or three sittings maybe. <laughs> it's super sad. It takes a lot of it, a lot of this uh, sap to make the final product. So anyway, we're gonna hopefully grab some more over the next couple days if it doesn't turn that bitter type of thing. And then grandpa's gonna come here and we're gonna keep on following up the process. Quick time out, make sure you check out our new cookbooks, Everyday Breads, Gourmet Desserts, and Chicken Made Easy. You're not gonna wanna miss it. All right, back to the video. So we've been enjoying our stay here in Michigan and enjoying family time. And today is the day um, where my dad is going to teach me, teach the kids the whole process start to finish. We've been watching him from a distance for over 10 years. He's been um, making his own um, homegrown syrup and it's it's the best. And so today's exciting. It's cold today. Yesterday was like a blizzard. We've gone from like almost 80 degrees to 20 degrees to today being like 40. So, but the sun's out, so it's a good day to go learn the process and have him teach all of us just something that he loves so much. So let's go. I think we're even gonna tap a tree or two and, and learn about the whole process. So it's gonna be fun. So let's go check it out. Okay, so we were, t I was talking to mom inside and um, we couldn't remember how long you've been doing um, your own syrup harvest. I know it's transformed over the years too, but how long have you been doing it for? I, I think since around 2012, so about 10 years. Okay, a little years. over 12 years. We had a friend who used to live in the area, he was an old gentleman, and, and he taught me how to do it. But we started with just a few taps and uh, on the top of a stove in the, in the kitchen and then uh, that wasn't enough because we had more sugar maple trees than that. So it didn't take long before we were up to 40 or 50 taps. And now normally in a normal season, I'll do 150 or so, process around three or 4,000 gallons of sap. Goodness. As a hobby, I have a full-time job. So <laughs> I hope my my bosses don't see this video. Well, we've already... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Well, and we already I, talked I disappear from the end of February to the middle of March. <laughs> you usually. take vacation. Oh, that's wellness. it. Thank wellness you. Time. No, we got it. Wellness Self time. Mental wellness. health. Wellness. Mental health. Yeah. Um, we talked about this a little bit on the fly this morning, but um, the weather, you know, I guess I didn't know much about it really yeah, yeah, until yeah. you started doing these things. But tell us a little bit about the best case scenario, time of year, and weather, and temperatures and all of that that you're looking for for a good successful syrup season or sap season I should say. Sure well one and the same right yeah. you got to have one for the other. Yeah. Um, so uh, an ideal day for what hap what's going on here at this time of the year is winter old man winter is beginning to release his grip <laughs> on the area and stuff is beginning to thaw including the trees and so the ideal situation for for tapping trees and for the season is for um, days to be in the tw in the I'm sorry days to be in the 40s and nights to be in the 20s. So a day like this with the sun shining brightly, you know the south in south direction here, right? It comes up, it comes up in the east and sets in the west. So I'm looking for trees where I can tap in like a southeast area okay. first because that's going to hit the sun first. And and what's happening is the sun hits the tree and it provokes the tree into into pumping water from deep in its roots below the ground up through the tree through the cambium layer and out into the branches as the tree begins to think about i know it doesn't have a brain but we can pretend. the lord made it right as the tree begins to supply nourishment to the furthest reaches of its branches at the top of the tree that requires a massive pumping effort to get all this water tons of water up the tree and out to the branches because in a few weeks We'll see buds and then we'll see leaves and Soon. it all seems natural and normal, but it's an amazing process of nature. And in, in tapping the tree, we are what we're doing for a little while, whether it's a, a week or six weeks, is we're gonna interrupt that flow and take out with this spile, we're gonna drill a hole in the tree and put this stainless steel spile in there. And you'll see in a, in a moment, this will allow some of the sap, not all of it, but some of it to be collected. Yeah. And so we're going to take a portion of that mass, we're going to interrupt that massive flow. Um, it doesn't harm the tree, it's been done for generations and, and hundreds of years now in the United States. There are only two areas of the U.S. where you can do this. It's uh, in either in New England, Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, um, and then the Great Lakes area. 
so fortunately we live in a Great Lakes area. You can use the maple, uh, the sugar maple tree is the tree of choice. You can tap other trees, but it is the, the sweetest, the richest, and the nicest. And that, that's what we have, we have here. We have three sugar maple trees. You can identify them. Oh, these leaves are old and yucky oh. now, but if, if my hand, if my hand was a sugar maple leaf, it actually has five nodes and you'd identify it by the deep U between the nodes. The U reminding you of sugar, S-U-G-A-R. So, no, that's an oak tree. Yeah, uh, I was we're trying not gonna, to dig around. That's okay, they're too, they're pretty sad looking. So anyway, um, we, we drill a hole. Um, we, use a, we use a smaller bit on the drill than we used in recent years. Okay. Um, or previous years. And then this is smaller, this is 5 16 Okay. It does, it has less impact on the tree and it doesn't, you know, make any difference in the amount of uh, sap that we can draw. So, so anyway. You drill, you tap, you bag, we'll show that process. Yeah. Um, but then what is your, I mean, you just sit there and watch it. Like you can't travel, you can't, you, when, what's your average amount of time that you keep the bags on the trees? Because you said from one week to six weeks, that's now, quite a, see, does it depend on the weather and the yep, sap you, flow? You asked right up front, I mean, what's the season look like? And yeah. the answer is we never know. Yeah. You never know. Um, a couple years ago, uh, I started tapping the end of February and then uh, just after, after about eight days, we had two 60 degree days in a row and everything comes to a screeching halt. Okay. Once the warm weather comes, and by warm I mean 60 degrees or more, the trees then, then shut down for sap production. The sap turns milky and becomes bitter when you boil it. So how long does the season last? I've had seasons that lasted almost two months, all of February and March into April. And other seasons typically, you know, four to six weeks would be a good season. We had a 70 degree day yesterday. So. <laughs> Which is why we collected, you had us pinch hit exactly. and so, get the sap off the so trees. So I, I might have gotten a little sap stored in the yeah. shed, so we had something to work with today, yeah. but uh, it's very unpredictable. You just never know. And we couldn't even check the sap today because yesterday, so we went from 70s two days ago to 20 being a high yesterday, something yeah. like that. And yep. then today still, you know, 39 or whatever everything was still frozen so we couldn't even check to see if the sap got milky right yesterday or if it disrupted flow right. i mean it, obviously there's not as much flow um but everything's frozen so we can't tell i have a quick question is can can the season start and stop and start again or no. is it is it one push it and you're done no bitter? once it's yeah, done it's yeah. done really yep no it will <laughs> it normally will not restart after the warmer temperatures come it changes the the composition of the sap into something we can't use for syrup. So it's almost like it's got that like sugar storage in for that first push of the of the, it, the break of the winter. The sugar is a carbohydrate and yeah. the carbohydrates solidify in the cold weather and what you're seeing is the warmth of the sun as it begins to, to the sun gets stronger and stronger through February and March it actually melts the carbohydrates in the tree and that's what gets picked up by the gotcha. by the sap. We tasted the sap um, yeah, that yeah. we collected fresh off the tree and there was an, an ounce of bitter in it it was so good and so sweet and yep. just so mild it was you know Josh talked about it being you know similar to like a coconut water but better that he liked it better um, as like God's natural um, electrolyte, electrolyte yeah. or mineral you yeah. know it's supply and stuff and cool I know you've done some research on just the benefits of pure maple syrup for just health benefits and different things, but it's got so many beautiful benefits besides just pouring on yeah. on uh, pancakes and stuff like that. There is that. I know we can't even get into all that. Sugar makers, people who make maple syrup are called sugar makers. And <laughs> sugar makers are looking for trees that are between, you know, 1.6 to 2% sugar up to four percent that tends to be the range so when Josh says it tasted sweet yeah. it does but it's only because of four percent of three and a half percent of it is, is sucrose yeah. it's, it's sugar but that little bit of sugar can make a big difference in taste so these trees historically have been really sweet these these two great trees here on either side yeah. um, mm -hmm. ought to produce around three percent sugar okay. and we can measure it. it's called the bricks measurement and we have I have a I have the device back at the sugar shack and I'll show you we'll take it in a in a stainless steel 
tube, a cup, and we'll we'll test the sugar. Oh, how cool! Yeah, it'll be fun. And then we can, when we're back at the sugar shack, you can break us down to the how that process. Once you've done this part, yeah, yeah, then we can break it down and talk about yeah. that process because you have you're doing it on a small scale for our sake this time, but normally you're doing it on a quite larger scales. So we can we yeah. can show all that it, and talk about is, that. This is still a hobby level, you know. Uh, um, there's a there's a small uh, sugar maker in Vermont that I'm, that I'm aware of. And um, and they're considered small, and he has ten thousand trees. Oh my goodness! So these operations—that's more than a hobby. I know. <laughs> You'll see taps in the woods, and there there there's tubes running through yeah. the woods, and and yeah. they have machines that suck it out of the tree. This is this is meant to be a natural kind of experience. And get out. It's it's a lousy time of year. It's cold and it's it's snowy, and it's nice to get out when spring is just peaking you know around the corner at you and, and it's a it's fun and everything is a, is 100 percent natural it's just the way Absolutely. god god made it yes pure maple syrup is is our go-to like uh unrefined sugar besides you know like raw yeah. cane sugar uh, organic or whatever or, but or honey our raw honey but like when we're looking at you know sweeteners for different things it's just so rich and honestly this is i'm not saying this just because you're my dad but it's the best syrup i've ever had and uh. it's like the top of the best of the best. It's fun to make. It's fun to make. Okay, let's go, let's go see. Okay. So uh, we're going to make, uh, this This is a tapping bit. It's Definitely. about two inches long on purpose. It's designed for this work. And I'm going to make a slightly inclined hole in this tree. Um, Upward, incline upwards? Yes. Okay. So, the, so to assist the sap to, pull, uh, to uh, come down. There's one, that gets some wood out of there. And do another one to clean it out. It's really important to get this hole as clean as you can so the sap has free, uh, a free channel to, to pour out. Now it's interesting here, I, I like to tap on the southeast side because in, in this area, that's where the sun first comes up. Sure. So it gives it the whole day as the sun makes its course, you know, from east to west. I want to give as much exposure as I can to uh, to my tap. This tree is still frozen, I think, because it, there's n there's no sap coming out of this. But that doesn't slow us down. Okay. We'll, we'll put a we'll put a spot. This uh we'll put a spile in the stainless steel thing. <laughs> is called a spile, and this is what goes in the tree. And one for good measure. <laughs> And then on this we'll hang we'll hang a bag that can collect the, the sap. So um, not too long ago everybody used buckets, five five to six gallon buckets. I switch over to bags because you don't have to clean them a year and it's cleaner. You throw them away. They're disposable. Uh, they're easy to use. They're lightweight, and it, it removes the need to have hoses. If I can go direct from the spile to this bag with the fewest amount of parts then it's the better. So this is galvanized steel and I slide the, the bag in here. You see the hole. Um, the spile is going to drip into this hole and down into the bag where it will be collected. This is about a four or five gallon bag and in a good running tree uh, you can fill one of these overnight. And that spile has like a little groove on it so that it holds it in place? This little, this yeah. little okay. uh, ring, this ring little ring it. here. And so we set that uh, over the ring. You got it, Jesse. Press it. Yeah. Well done. Yes. And now we just need uh, we need the sun to do its thing and warm up, and this tree will produce sap for us. Do you have in the, real quick? Have you tapped this tree before? Yeah, you can see. Do you have like a spot where it's like heel over or like not? Sure. Right, right here. Oh, there's a burst. Um, Is this one right here. That's one too. That's okay. closed off. And there's one here. There's one here. Yep. Okay. One here. In fact, there's one a here. there's a new trend in homeowners. They like to buy tap wood. It's maple. This tree, when it's old and done, cut it down, turn it into boards, and these these tap holes appear as, as dark, uh, round, uh, like heel wood. Yeah. yeah. Holes in the wood, and it's just it's just a unique thing. Huh? How cool. Yeah. So 
when you have huge amounts of sap, like on a normal big harvest, where do you store the sap before you begin the processing yeah. of it? Um, I can show you. On the other side okay. is, is a 165 gallon stainless steel tank. Okay. And I pump it. Um, From the it outside. Actually, it runs through gravity right through here to this. Okay. And I run it through a series of filters. And stored in, in, in these here, and then okay. I draw it out. It, actually, this is directly hooked up to this, which has an automatic float on it. This will give me up to 186 degrees. Okay. And then the pots and the finishing pan will take it all the way to 212. When does sap become maple syrup is the question. And and the answer is, I, I need to take it from, from 212 degrees, which is the boiling point of water, to uh, at seven and a half degrees to that to 219.5. At 219.5, it becomes legally maple syrup. So this will get me to about 186 degrees, and then I draw it off and put it on the stove top with the, the gas burner, and that'll bring it up to 212 in a full boil, and then keep then then things start getting fun. It gets interesting as it goes from 212, 215, 16, and then at 219.5 off it comes through the filters and then, then I'm going to bottle it. So a couple things, so let's say you harvest, you collect, it's all in its, your storage containers. What is like the, when you begin on a normal, I know there's variation, but when you begin the processing and the boiling down and the getting to the right temperature, what, how long does that process take? It, um, it all depends on the heat, or how much heat you're going to generate, you can generate. Using um, using an evaporator and a stovetop, kind of a hobbyist setup like what I have, you can figure six to eight hours okay. from, from raw sap to finished product. Okay. And people can do this on a small scale, but I mean, with the understanding that it takes 40 sure. whatever gallons of sap to, to equal yeah. one gallon of syrup. We started, like I said, we, I started um, in the kitchen. Yeah, so <laughs> and they have upgraded to yeah, this. Well, there's filters involved yeah. and yeah, there's, there's evaporators. Yeah, but and from, from the tree to this um, yeah. is, is really the key and that takes, that's going to take, that's going to take a good eight hours usually to, uh, to get to that point. You can speed it up by having faster, hotter equipment. The professionals use gas fired, uh, usually propane fired. Um, uh, furnaces, for lack of a better word, they drive the sap through it and they get it up to temperatures very, very quickly. And, um, and I don't anyway. think they appreciate it as much as you do when you <laughs> do the work, well, right? <laughs> once we get the, the sap, once we get the product up to 219.5 degrees, um, let it cool off and at a, actually, at about 190 degrees, 190 to 195, we put it through the filter system. Now these are two, you can feel this. They're hardy. Very thick. Very thick. Uh, yeah, very thick it's filters. Like and then this catches, it's more of a surface filter, right? This will catch any debris, a uh, bits of of um, a bark or or anything like that. And so anyway, these are not cut to fit yet. You'll get the idea, but these go you in. You do the, all three of those at once? Like do you do the yeah, two yeah. of, wow. Yeah, so, so the sap, the hut, the hut sap, I have stainless steel clips, you know, to make yeah. it nice, but it pours into here. This and this sits in here. So we we pour the I pour the hot sap through here. It's filtered that way. It takes a while. It drips down to here in the stainless steel tank, and that's where we keep it until it's time to draw it off. Bottle and here goes into the bottle here. This this fits right in. Gosh, I didn't realize the how oh, yeah. heavy duty. I bet that would take a long time, especially if it's thick like that. But if it's the hotter it is, the faster it'll go. Fit you, it. you can't you, you can't you need to put it through at about 190 to 195 degrees. You can't bottle it. Um, the ideal temperature to bottle it is 185 degrees. That's an, that's hot enough to kill any mold or sure. impurities in it. Sure. If you if you allow anything to go too hot, you get crystals in here. You but that's get, the best thing oh ever. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't I'm care. I'm them out of those jars. It's hard okay, to so it's so much easier to get them out of different jars, but like oh, we yeah, have, yeah. you know, we, we inherit, you know, dad's syrup, and the crystal candy is like the coveted, that's um, right. the crystal maple candy, even though I know it's technically not a good thing or whatever. It's just the kids, right. it is the most delicious stuff. So it doesn't bother us at all. In, in a regular, my next, my next chapter in maple syrup production, I would love to make, um, 
maple sugar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you take that by getting it to 219.5 and then you heat it again and you get up to a 222 to 224 degrees and it crystallizes and you can make enough of that i have some molds you can put it in a mold and make sugar candy grandpa's candy shack we're yeah. in or <laughs> we will taste it for the, you the product actually looks like uh, brown sugar okay. it, it's 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 rich it's crumbly and they sell maple syrup sugar yeah. at about $24 a pound in Vermont at the country so. store. So. Of course they do. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're rigging the test here. Yeah. Okay. So I, normally I, I do this in the woods. Okay. Um, you, fill the, you fill the stainless steel. Okay. All the way? And then um, it's going to spill over. Okay. We, we put this, it's a it's a hygrometer is what it's called, uh, and it measures on the BRICS scale of what the level of, it'll tell us what the level of uh, sugar is. That is so cool. It, it's going to bounce for a minute, let me put it down. So what this is going to come at, you see the two yeah. just there? Yeah. This, the tree that we tap for this, um, this sap is about 2% sugar, Okay. which is normal. Um, my sweetest trees will be three to three and a half. Which are the ones we tapped today, I think, were the, the sweeter we trees. Exactly. But this is from the ones that are further, what These direction? are the ones in the woods. In the woods and, that yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, you do this in the woods, you can test the trees. And I do, when I first tapped, I would, I would go around to every tree. And yeah. now, now, who could be bothered with such right. things? But, that but anyway, was at the beginning. But this, so this settles settles in just, just under two, okay. two percent. Yeah. It's right there. Yep. This one here, um, you put this in finished syrup. And it's um, syrup this is the cold itself. mark and this is the hot. You test the hot at 211 okay. and you test the cold at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So two different two different tests, one device, and this will tell you whether you're legally syrup or not. One for cold and one for hot. So this tests the syrup readiness and this one tests the glucosity. Dad has been so gracious to show all these things, different things to us and is taking us through the whole process on a small scale. So now it's the waiting game and watching game, right? Yeah, that's right. So we're gonna wait and watch. We've already tasted and seen how the, uh, the sap is transforming. You can smell it in the air. It smells like cotton candy and it's beautiful and amazing. And so, yeah, as it continues, we're gonna share the process with all of you and also show you just what it looks like when it's all done and beautiful and ready to go on your table, so. Making maple syrup is a grand exercise in watching water boil. <laughs> exactly. That, that's, what, that's what it is. There's the man of the hour. Come in, come in. How we doing? Pretty good. Wow. Look at that. Did it go all night? No, no, I, I turned it you off. You turned it off six, and you turned it on this morning? Six o'clock this morning. All these that we started with are down to this. I mean, it literally takes 40, what'd you say, 43 gallons of 43 sap gallons to exactly. get down to one gallon of syrup. The cool thing is like you could do this as a homeschool project on this level. Absolutely, Like yes. there's you, someone Absolutely. could do this with their kids and get a bottle of syrup or three bottles of syrup and yeah. it's worth it for a very low cost investment up front. You'll notice we've moved from analog thermometers to the digital yeah. Yeah. because of the increased, yeah, yeah, the increased accuracy and to the half a degree, it lets me monitor a little more closely because this stage is the critical stage. You don't want to go too long or too short. It's got to be pretty much on the money. It's 219.5 is what we're going for, right? Yeah. Uh, and steady. Okay, know. where it holds not, consistent. Not spiky, but steady. I can go a little above to account for sea level. I, we're about 520 feet above sea level. By rights, I could take this to 220.5 and be okay. I did that often last season, and I got a lot of crystallization. The crystallization happens if you overcook your syrup a little bit. Which we're big fans of, I, I know. but I know you're not. You we already talked about how yummy that stuff is. It's really good. We're 219 and a half. Okay. So we're gonna turn this puppy down. Okay. We're gonna let it cool. It's got, we're gonna let it cool to 195. Which might happen quick out here. And then we're gonna filter it at 195 degrees. We're gonna fill this beaker with whatever the, the batch will yield. And then um, once the filtration is done, we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna get it to 185 degrees. 
so it may need to be heated up a little bit at that at that temperature we can pour it into the bottles okay and we're done grandpa comes out here for his serenity time 95.1 here we go all right we're going to filter this puppy and I'll pour it through a, a three layer filter and then the beaker will collect obviously the finished product. I know people can't smell what I'm smelling, but it just smells like candy, cotton candy in here. We're at um, 700, is that right? Yes. Yeah, 700, 700 milliliters, mLs, yep. Milliliters, yeah. And there's still quite a bit of. Just letting it work its way through. Yeah, we're okay. letting it work its way through. I, I don't, you can't, you don't want to rush that. You want it to. To be, filtered, it be filtered well. That's just crazy how quickly. I mean, I would not have expected it to run through that quick. I didn't either. And just for reference, um, an eight ounce bottle is about 250 milliliters. Okay. So if we end up at 750, that'll be three. Yeah. If it's more, then it'll be it'll be slightly more. So it's really golden. Very interesting. Um, so that's going to continue to work through. Okay. Let's take a quick temperature on this, make sure I'm in the clear. Yeah, I think I need to heat this up a little bit, man. Oh, look at that. Our, uh, isn't that beautiful? I might take a little hit of that for my coffee. <laughs> All right, we're going to quickly take this up to 185 okay. ish. And yeah. then all done, all done. We got 191 here. Okay. This is good. So all done. Number six, we're good. All right, go ahead. Good, good, good. So, here we are, the moment of truth. I'm going to pour this. The satisfaction part. Yeah. It's sir. gorgeous. We're going to let it sit for just a minute because I want the bubbles to go away. Yeah. I'm going to go more slowly so I don't get crazy air bubbles. Josh is doing right now. He's licking the pan <laughs> like a weirdo. It's no, it's like the kids when you. Have I know the bacon when you make stuff. cookies. <laughs> okay, now at this point, um, this is still hot. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna lay it down. Okay. And it's gonna create a seal to the top. Oh, cool. And until it, it cools well. Um, and this one here. I didn't think about and that. And you don't let them touch each other. Don't ask me why. But there's something to it. There's something to it. Um, they need to be by themselves. So when you're doing they're a little cranky, I guess. Cranky. 